They take them both off the board. Not entirely sold on what Seros wants to play due to this, but they love picking that mid laner last. Really excited to see how they go about kind of making their composition here. You mentioned interesting bands on the side of Isaris, the Zeleon, the Kalista, and the Maokai. We haven't have we seen a Zeleon today? No, but you won't. <laughs> That's the thing. Seros is a Zeleon yep. god. Like, okay. Of all people in this like whole lobby, he's the only Zeleon player, firstly, but he is like number one Zeleon in the world. Because well, he's the only one, probably. But he's also really good at it. <laughs> well, it's definitely a smart ban. It shows that Isaris have done their research, and they are going to be locking in that Graves. We've seen Graves time and time again doing work in that jungle. The big burly man with the shotgun. No stranger. Not yeah. afraid of a few wolves. Very good champion. You alluded to it in the last game. Very surprising that it wasn't locked down at all by either team. The Graves, well and truly a threat. And from what we saw of Isaris in the first game that they played, the Graves was a big deal. Sure. It looks like the Sivir has been locked in banned last game, so we will be seeing that on the side of Xeros. Kindred being hovered over here, that does get locked in. So the Kindreds, we haven't really seen them utilized to their full potential today, but maybe it is going to be on Catch, who is without a doubt the best jungler in his region. Yeah, absolutely. He is a phenomenal jungle player. I do feel like... The, yeah, the Kindred Sivir is good. They've actually secured themselves the Beyblade Arena as such. They've ba <laughs> banned away the Azir as well. Yep. So there's not a lot of counterplay to the Kindred. Oh, that's the what I like about it. I was just talking earlier to some of the guys about why we haven't been seeing Karma lately, and there it is. It is going to be locked in. So interested to see how, just how well Karma does, given that her uh, shield is such a massive speed up now. Yeah, they gave it like a 0.3 AP boost as well. Yeah, it was something insane. ridiculous. Like it's shield for so much now, and Karma in the mid lane in particular. It's actually just very good. It's just really, really damn good. So EMP, if he locks that one down, may still go to the support role. But that Karma in the mid lane is what I would like to define as a Siva crossed with like a Lulu sure. in terms of its utility. That makes a lot of sense. But yeah, pretty much on the side of Isaros Gaming, a lot of the champions have multiple uh, roles at the moment. Karma support uh, could go mid. You could see Cork in the mid lane. You could see Graves top. You could see whatever you wanted out of here so not revealing any cards at the moment that on the side of detonation focus me they are going to be locking in that front line with the gragas and alistar being taken away yeah they pick their tanks they've got now their engage their disengage and it's going to be that gragas in the top lane however as kindred is going to be jungling but once True. again and to no surprise seros gets that last option whatever he would like to play basically it's just how detonation focus me was <laughs> it's due to hold. you man a whole myriad of champions at his disposal, really looking forward to what he picks now that his uh, godly Zeleon has been banned. What's the endearing thing that Max, or Atlas rather, always says is like a lot of people have like champion pools that they pick from here, the champion ocean <laughs> he likes to pick from. I like it. On the side of Isaris Gaming, they should be locking in the last two champions at the moment. Would be surprised to see that Aurelian Soul. And the brand, probably not going to happen as they do have a few seconds left before their picks are finalized. Poppy and Braum though, very, very strong here. So it looks like it will be a Karma in the mid and that Corky on the ADC roll. Poppy going to be up in that top lane while Graves in the jungle. Yeah, so they actually work it out to be completely standard. Of course, sure. they reveal who is playing in the middle lane here for an ISG, which gives Seros that counter pick availability. There it is. Well, Soul Strikes, he did go on quite a spiel about how good Rise is at the moment. So he's going to be happy that it has been realized by some of the players in this tournament here, as it will go on the back of Seros. Yeah, less spells in the rotation for the Rise, but more damage in said spells. So sure. it's just a little bit more potent in shorter bursts, but you can't lock someone down from 100 to 0 anymore. I mean, with both Team Comp secured, I'm looking at a lot of damage out of Detonation Focus Me with sparing. Engage, and that to me is the big concern because up against Isaris, they don't necessarily have to fight you yet. They can try and scale past it, but I guess that's where the flip side comes into the rise. Well, that's a great point. Four teleports, two on each side, so expect a lot of flanks and a lot of split pushing coming out of these teams. We saw a lot more focus today around the Rift Herald, then so the Dragon. So it's it's interesting to see just how this. Uh, neutral objective has gone from kind of a uh, second thought to a really pr uh, prime objective. Yeah, it got released and everyone's like, what is this Rift Herald? It does <laughs> nothing. And then nothing changed to it. And everyone's like, get the Rift Herald. It does everything. <laughs> but it's that's mostly because people are lane swapping. 
Sure. I find like the the real realistically, you just chill out and you get a tower, and then you get the rift tail, then you get bottom, and you actually run the risk of getting two towers instead because of how much damage the minions now do. They're super empowered, essentially, and it actually just provides a lot of availability with lane swaps. And again, it became very important with utility. IEM in particular for a lot of regions was like, oh, hang on. It's actually very important that we get the Rift Herald. I think Europe and NA playing the Western lane swap as it's defined actually does prioritize that quite heavily. Yeah, we saw with a massive wave of minions just how fast a tower gets taken down earlier on in the day. I remember Graves having to ult just a wave of minions to keep his tower alive. But yeah, really interested to see how these teams prioritize if they lane swap at all. Yeah, the lane swap to me, so like it's... I don't think there's a poor lane for either of these teams. The Alistars sure. naturally are the ones that try to lane swap because you want to hide the Alistar, perhaps get that level 2 and then look to 2v2 lane. Braum naturally finds power at level 1. Can still lane swap, however. It just depends on what the teams actually want to do. Alrighty, we are now in the game. Really excited to see how these guys go. Karma versus Rise, not a matchup I'm quite versed in, but should be explosive nonetheless. Yeah, one has shields and does a lot of damage. The other one has shields and does a lot of damage. <laughs> um, that's the basis of it. Yeah. Rise would be a little bit more ultimate reliant. Of course, gets the passive and can put spells down, but EMP doesn't need anything other than his Q. Yeah, it looks like both of them just feeling each other out now, making sure that no one can get a ward in any of those little cheeky regions, keeping everyone at bay. Looks like we will be seeing maybe a lane swap as we see Brahm and Corky heading to that top while Sivir and Ali are on the bot side. Yeah. So it looks like the side of um, Brahm going to be instigating that one. Yeah, Latin America South want to instigate said lane swap. I think they actually want to deep invade and stop jungle camps from being taken. They will be spotted by a ward, however, sure. as they work their way there. But this, once again, we saw the first time these guys played it was a lane swap. And yep. whilst it was a lane swap, it wasn't done optimally. It was actually quite questionable in the way that they put it into effect. So we'll see how they do it this time around against Detonation Focus Me, who are not a lane swap inclined team. They can do it if you make them do it. They'd rather 2v2 you. Well, well looks like Eternal will be doing a little bit at this red buff. It does get smited away, so not going to take that one. Siva comes in. Looks like their focus will be onto Kratos. Not too much going to come from that one, though. Oh, the 20 gold, though. <laughs> oh, the 40 gold, <laughs> though. Hashtag worth. Wasting time, getting the extra money. Sort of worth, because you missed the whole wave. But they actually just force people out of the jungle. Red buff, though, secured. That's the major conflicting differences. Level 2. Ooh, close. The snare not going to proc as Ryze just gets out of range here. So on the side of Detonation Focus Me, they will be taking their second camp here. Neither of them hitting level 2. That's unfortunate. Yeah, completely pushed out of the other side of the jungle, however, which is why they are so behind in experience at the very least. A bit of farm potentially as well. Whereas we are going to start taking down these turrets. Differences, though, from the Latin American South team. Yeah, they Zycro. haven't actually brought people here yet. Zyko is there up by himself while the side of Focus Me have got their enti uh, entire lane swap squad in this bot. Utapon has made his way down. Here they come. A little bit late and Pride only level one. Yeah, so the cavalry arrives. I will say, though, it was very inefficiently done by sure. Zykro to actually not have enough minions here. It may take them a little bit longer to get this done. In fact, it's going to take them a lot longer than that of Detonation Focus Me, who are playing this stock standard. Yep. No alterations. Looks like Kindred will be there in the wings should they need a little bit more damage to finish that one off after taking down the double Krugs. Tower very low in this bot side. Utapon should be getting the solo gold for this one. Might go over to Pride here. Or Zyker as Pride just moves up for that next wave of minions. Yeah, so they do give it to Pride. Sure. I'm not sure. He was just going on a little bit of a wander upside to see what happened. And we are going to give gold assignments towards the top lanes. No share gold. So at the end of the day, taking the towers at the exact same amount of time, but. See, Kaltos, he is going to be going in, Kratos rather, going in to get himself that red buff. Yeah, has an extra buff in the start and nice. doesn't find himself too far ahead in terms of farm, but naturally just has a bit more control of the major buffs on the map, even threatening mid lane. So both mid laners haven't really done too much yet, but what can you expect from a Rise Karma lane? They just want to farm up to their item, teleport back in the lane, should. It's an early pink. Oh, Kletos, he might be in a little bit of trouble here as Alistair comes from the flank. Not going to happen, though, as he just quick draws out of there. Yeah, Graves, not too good at clearing out the pinks this early on in the game, especially as we see Catch 
just taking his jungle camp up in the top. Yeah, I think was also just placed mega early though from Detonation Focus Me, so finds a point of safety. Was susceptible to a gank, however, sure. thankfully, and it was a predictable timing from Kletos. They don't fall for it. And everything resets as we uh, swap sides again. Get the other turret. Yeah, it looks like it... Uh Xeros went for the cull here, but on the side of Zykro, he's not going to have his own, so maybe falling a little bit behind if it's a pure farm lane, but where does Corky really find the time to get a cull? Yeah, I don't know if Corky necessarily... So, like, whilst the cull's great, it isn't a necessary item buy, and, yeah. like, the only reason you get it is if you're taking damage or you think you're going to lose trades at a certain point in the game. And the gold. It's But the gold only makes it cost efficient. Like, it makes a net zero Fair gain, cool. right? So by having it, you need to actually need it, or you just spend 350 gold to get 350 gold. That's a fair call. I think it's 450, isn't it? Because you get one extra, you get one extra gold for every minion you kill, and you get like a bounty. Yeah, well, it adds up to yeah. being so like it, it's a net gain of zero from having the item. So the only reason you get it is if you need a bit of extra sustain. Of course, Zeros doesn't necessarily need it, That's a fair but call. it's a safety item. It looks like they will be picking that one up. Both teams trying to get their towers, but in the bot lane though. Issa is not going to be knocking that one down in time. So don't focus me off to a little bit of a lead already. Yeah, and they actually started that lane. So I'm getting, they keep going towards turrets. It's sure. like, this isn't done efficiently from Isaris gaming at all. Yep. But even that last one from Detonation Focus, it was like, oh, there's small details that perhaps could have been refined here and there. But all in all, Isaris gaming have done this significantly worse. And, yep. and we question this coming into it. Like, they're the ones that want the lane swap, but they've done it poorly. EMP might be in a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> we mentioned that movement speed from the E, and it is just paying off already as he's able to zip out of there before Ryze can even think about getting in range. But yeah, don't even focus me. They're not going to lose that tower in the bot. Gragas teleported in time to save that. So like you mentioned, it is was a little bit sloppy by both teams. But yeah, Isra is definitely coming out the lesser in that one. Yeah, and I mean, Udupon using that teleport as well was actually very clever to save the bottom lane turret. Resets with, him sh with a short lane to protect him as well. Sure. We actually find ourselves in somewhat standard lanes. Very difficult to directly say that they are standard lanes, however, given that one of them's got... Well, both top laners, 80 carries, rather, have no turrets. <laughs> so Zyko is probably just going to push this lane out, and then he's probably going to disappear. It looks like Seros used his Not teleport after picking himself up the Catalyst and the tier to make sure he gets back up to lane in time. A nice Spell Shield to prevent any damage and a nice Shield to do exactly the same as we see Kletos. Going to be getting another red buff, so he's done a great job of controlling the buffs this game. Yeah, controlling the buffs once again, very nice, but is it really enough when, you know, Kindred keeps up with farm, Kindred's keeping up with levels. It's a fair point. And there's no direct advantage gained by having all of these red buffs because no gank has been, go like, gotten up successfully from it regardless. Yeah. We can see the Kindred, Mark of the Kindred on the Scuttle Crab in that top side river. No one making their way over to take or deny that one just yet. So What's we it see. What's called? Mark of, Mark of the Kindred. Is it Mark of the Kindred? Yeah. That's basic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing cool. Just pretty simple. Yeah, they could have made that really cool. Uh, we'll come up with something, I'm sure, to spice it up a little bit. But a big wave in that top as we see Nubi and Zykro going to be pushing that one in. No one to help them with getting anything more and catches there also should they get a little over aggressive. Yeah, so long lane they want to try and reset the minion wave otherwise things could get a little bit frozen in the top lane mm -hmm. for detonation focus men. So Zykro and whatnot would definitely struggle. So see what they can do. Of course, the Siva, I'm not going to say Siva's ever really inclined to freeze. Yep. Still better safe than sorry as honestly, junglers are the big important factor to me at the moment. They need to try and get something done. Kletos denies that mark of the Kindred after picking up the Scuttle Crab for himself. So we mentioned uh, the last Kindred game just how good luck it is to get it on that Scuttle Crab. It means you don't have to pass over that halfway mark to get yourself another stack. So kind of missing out on that one there, I feel. Yeah, he's missing out a little bit. But naturally, with the slow pace that this game has started sure. with, Kindred's going to be able to stack up at a reasonably fast pace. Of course, nine-minute Devourer. Yeah, that's got to be good. We see Karma in the mid lane. Going for that Frostfang once again, something we haven't seen in quite a while, but obviously still wants the benefit of the Frost Queen's claim later on. Yeah, reasonably out of meta item, I will say. You only get 10% cooldown reduction instead of the Morellos or the Athenes, which is more. But you still find your advantages with this. You can't actually get caught out of position in mid lane as much, especially when warding, because sure. it's the safety button. 
You just put out your spooky ghost and try and find <laughs> people catching you out of position instead. No, I can definitely see the benefits. But yeah, a lot of mid laners opting to go for something else these days. In the bot lane, we see Newbie and Zykro just doing what they can to farm up. He's got himself a Sheen using the package as it was about to time out just to help him push that wave in. We see Graves has made his way down. Kindred is nearby, though. They might be catching each other here. Oh, Ooh. that was a great dash oh, by no. Klaatos. He might be in a little bit of trouble, though. Newbie, he's up the creek with no paddle, and everyone just going to be walking away from that one. No one wants to fall behind just yet. Yeah, they were going for the Graves, but they don't find him. So the next <clears throat> best bet was the Braum, but you can't really catch a Braum out of position like that. Sure. He still had his flash available, still had his jump available as well, and just opted into not using anything and just putting up the door. So they don't get a pick, but the turret does fall and everything evens itself out. Eternal going to be taking a little bit of damage, not six yet, so if he gets locked, out, no, locked up, no way to get himself out of that one. Clearing out the wards to deny vision always a priority. The dragon has been started, though, by Kratos. Yeah, we're going for the early dragon. Well, I guess it's an early dragon. <laughs> It'll be the first one contested of the game at the very least. As it was a slow trade, given that the Rift Herald was taken very quickly on the side of... Was it ISG that got it? Not 100% sure. No, it was Dead FM, yeah. That was what they did to accelerate yeah, the top lane push. And then push. they were able to yeah. uh, teleport the Gragas down to ensure that that tower survived, which has now fallen. So both teams, two towers apiece. Any real advantage coming out here is the fact... They have a dragon to their name. A yeah, bit of extra damage, but it's a scaling thing nonetheless, so True the that. relative advantage is not too oh. high. You might want to look at Pride here as the hammer gets charged up, but the Keeper of the Verdict not going to get uh, proc here, so it goes on about a 70% uh, cooldown or something like that. If it's not used. It's like 10 seconds, maybe. Oh, True. Wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if it was something. Catch is oh. having a real dig, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving it a good go. Trying to find catches everywhere. Well, he might be. He might have found a catch, but the wrong type is. He is able to jump over that as EMP puts up a tether. Not going to proc it though. No, very hard to keep up with a kindred, even as Karma, nonetheless. Yep. Karma finished herself that Frost Queen's claim and boots of lucidity, going a very cooldown heavy build, making sure that mantra is available as frequently as possible. Arise, we know him for his mana builds, and this is going to be no surprise. Zycro. Very defensive Valkyrie the second he saw Eternal there. Yeah, it means no uh, no dash available to him also, so he actually needs to show some respect. But he's in the same predicament that he was roughly two minutes ago, that he wants to break that freeze. Yep. If they don't break the freeze, they could run into a spot of bother. But he can't really get his team to help him because they're over here killing another thing entirely. Yeah, despite being... Oh, it looks like Pride might be in a little bit of trouble. He goes in onto Catch, but Catch does have the ulti available. Pride, he has his flash up. He gets away from the bow. Is it going to be enough, though? The red buff is there. The teleport from Emp comes down. Spooky Ghosts have been used, but both members just going to run away. Yeah, a lot of damage out of the Karma, but it's not enough to secure anything for the team. But for what it's worth, he'll get himself a mark, and I would say still be happy for it. ISG. Caught out of position once again, this Poppy. And that's the power of a top lane Gragas here and there. Yeah, forcing the flash through. You gotta take you gotta take what advantages you can get, especially in a very close matchup as we see Seros getting himself the first blue buff of the game. Catch kindly donating that one away. He yeah. needs those Devourer stacks, man. It's no laughing matter. He definitely does need to I think you get it for the assist anyway. So oh cool. Yeah. He'll be happy. As long as he hit it. <laughs> Seros, though, that blue buff that you mentioned will be stacking his tier a bit quicker. The Rod of Age is also done pretty early for him, given his item build. Yeah, definitely. They'd be quite happy with that. And once again, we're looking at a scaling rise on the side of Detonation. Focus me. Yeah, so both teams pretty much dead even here. The only outlier being the Dragon. But you mentioned that it's such a stacking thing as we see Seros takes a little bit of damage. But realistically, both these champions just looking to farm up. Zeros in the top. Wants to break this uh this push here. You can't really freeze as a Sivir. Eventually, you're going to just want to use her utility. Yeah, I mean, you could lanes. freeze, but you just like impulsively need to use your W because <laughs> it's a part of your kit. You, yeah. you, just have to, you just have to, man. It looks very satisfying as well to watch the Ricochet just bounce and go crit, 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 crit oh, through yeah. the entire minion wave. It's a super silly concept. Cork got himself the cull in the end. 
After getting that Trinity Force, so a very late cull here. It's not really a necessary cull either, yeah. to be perfectly honest with you, but yeah, he does have the cull. Sure. I suppose. Everyone's you know, got their reasons for it. <laughs> it's a very ulti. defensive ulti here, but you've got to remember that the Rift Herald buff is in play as it times out as I finish my sentence, so the damage to the tower will be minuscule, but it still will be there. That was... It got blocked by Newbie's Braum shield. Yep. For what it's worth. I think he was trying to clear the wave with the ultimate. Oh, definitely. So all of the minions living on half health. Still makes the life easier for the turret that can just one-hit all of them. A small victory in a marginal mechanical error. Well, at the time, he was going up against the Rift Herald minions, and they are quite a daunting foe to behold. So maybe it was just a little bit of panic on his part. <laughs> I think it was all right. He just needed <laughs> to wait for the shield to end. Yeah, true. That. A bit of a... Oh, Catch going to be getting himself a nice stack on his Mark of the Kindred. Picking up this crab should Poppy not intervene. Looks like Emp and Kletos, they might want something to say about this. No, he's just going to hop over the wall. No issues. Yeah, it gets out safely once again. Catch on this Kindred. I think that is the second Scuttle Crab mark that I've seen from him recently. So, getting it going. Always happy when he's scaling and getting those stacks. And it makes a lot of sense that he's just going to continue to hard farm the jungle with that Devour and get it as close to 20, 30 rather as possible as soon as he can. I feel like there's no really... And this is what I expected coming into this game as well between these teams. There's no onus on either one to make the proactive play. They both just are comfortable sitting around and letting it happen a bit later. Detonation focused me perhaps out of the two if I had to choose one. But they've still got that rise comp. Yeah. So not really at all. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a very slow game, this one. We see both of the carries hitting their first item. The Trinity Force picked up by on the side of Zykro. Then Xeros, he's got himself the Essence Reaver. But really not looking to pick any fights here. No. Just looking to farm up a storm. Everyone very content waiting for those items. Of course, the Trinity Force, namely, mm -hmm. would be Isaris Gaming's best bet at being aggressive. And you can see every time he has his package... He goes super aggressive and tries to actually push things out. It's also unusual lane assignments from Detonation Focus Me by having Xerost with the Poppy at all times. Sure. And, I mean, I feel like there's probably a kill threat on that Sivir if Kletos was anywhere nearby, but he never seems to be. Another mark of the Kindred appearing on that Scuttle Crab, so having a lot of really good luck here as uh, Eternal. Going to be shredding the armor and resistance, making sure that's an easy one for Catch to Catch. The dragon has spawned, so we might see DFM get themselves the first dragon of the game here. What's the actual passive called? It's called Mark of the Kindred. The whole thing is, is yes. it? Like the mark and the passive. It's called Mark of the Kindred as we see a fight. Oh, he might be in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, the Flash Lambs are a spike. Going to be keeping him alive, but is it enough? The shields go down. The first blood goes over to Graves, taking out that rise. The fight isn't over yet. He wants to make something happen. Pride knocks one away, but Zyko, he's got himself enough damage to finish oh. off one more. They're so low. That's going to be it. Zyko takes out Siva with a well-placed rocket. So just like that, that game explodes. And that's yeah. two kills going over. Two big kills and a lot of pressure now established in this middle lane. It's pretty hard to break a Gragas lane. But they're definitely going to try with five members strong. Isaurus Gaming. They get themselves the first big scuffle of this game and they come out very successful. Yeah, that was a massive catch onto Saros. He was just in the wrong place and the wrong time. A beautiful flash respite by catch to keep him alive but it wasn't enough and then Xeros falling to a well-placed rocket on the end of that that puts Isaris up <laughs> about 400 gold rusty yeah you know <laughs> like a reasonable margin you would say but nope not this time around of course they only get themselves the kills and not a whole lot of gold as any type of buffer whatsoever but they still have a bit of momentum and yep. that's the big thing that you have to take away from any competitive game that you watch is Momentum dictates who has control of the map. Cyros caught out of position. It's not a promising sign for things to come. But only because Isaris Gaming are going to start playing a little bit more aggressively with their stance due to this. Well, DFM were able to get themselves the dragon on the back of that skirmish. So they can take that away from that fight. And this is the third Rift Herald of this game as well if they choose to take this one down. He's going to go extinct soon if the they keep this The attention that it gets from all of these teams is phenomenal. 
It's really proving to be a great addition to the map, allowing for some objective, some reason to, cro to control the top side of the map this early on. Teams really prioritizing the buff that it gives. We see Karma picking that one up. Looks like the mid tower is really what they want to uh, siege out here. And it's funny to me because nobody actually contests it. Yeah. And that's probably why everyone just goes for it, because it is considered, I have nothing else to do on the map. It's a free objective. Let's just take it. But if people actually started contesting it like it was an object of worth to them, things may change. Of course, it doesn't mean a whole lot if you have wave clear. Sure. You just got the buff there to kind of accelerate the minion waves. Looks pretty. It does look pretty. People turn purple. <laughs> <laughs> but all things considered, I do think that we are need more reasons to watch people actually contest the Rift Herald. Same with the dragon. No one really contests the dragon anymore. They just take it as a free objective. Yeah. Well, catch... He wants to take that dragon because he's got himself that fully stacked Devourer now. Looks like the fight has started. Emp, he wants to go for something here. Gets the snare. It's going to be enough. The Braum ulti comes through, but Eternal doing a great job yeah, of keeping Braum's everyone locked up. Pride comes in. Braum goes down. Seros, he's going to be getting the nice lockdown onto EMP. He gets taken out. So they answer with two kills of their own. Isaris, they're on the back foot. Yeah, they absolutely are. A lot of pressure now achieved by Detonation Focus Man. You would imagine this siege... A little bit more realistic. Yeah. Alistar for Dive, as an example, is a very scary prospect. And there we get the first mid lane turret break. Yeah, Sarah's doing a great job of locking down the correct targets. Braum may have been a bit more than he could chew off there, trying to be that tanky frontliner, but he's not that tanky just yet. Ryze was able to combo him down with a machine gun of spell slings. Yeah, definitely smart play here from Detonation Focus Me again. Recognizing that they can win that team fight was very important. Seros is doing a ridiculous amount of damage. He has a ridiculous amount of farm. And you would imagine that he's about to go back and finish off that Seros embrace, and perhaps upgrade his boots, and then be even stronger. Yeah, it looks like Seros went for the early Phantom Dancer. It'll be a lot of attack speed, a lot of crit. Great, because Siva, she can just attack the front line and let the Ricochet do the rest. One crit, they all crit. So, one of the only carries that can get away with that type of play. Looks like EMP just going to be clearing out a ward as Newbie. Gets some over on the very contested Rift Herald, which has now spawned into the Baron. I don't think either of his teams will be giving that one up uncontested. And it's funny, because we even, like, t I briefly touched on the momentum thing. That was definitely Isaris trying to engage. Yeah, like, they yeah. felt like the they were a little bit there. ahead. He was waiting. They turned it around, but Cyrus had already bursted EMP by a fair bit. As they're going again. Oh, Kletos might be in a little bit of trouble, but there is Pride in the front line showing what Poppy's worth. The teleport cancelled. was cancelled. By both. No. no one coming in here. Catch, he might have been caught out. Pride wants to go for this one. The flash just at the end of that tether. So EMP, the Karma... Not really being able to do much with the tethers. The shield is great and all. The speed up is beautiful. That was a curious cancel though. Yeah. Does Gragas potentially put himself in a bad position if he follow it up? Sure. But he also just forced the flash out of catch. It's a great point. Which I guess was a communication error because he kind of stayed around expecting the teleport to finish. I don't know. Yeah, obviously not communicated well. Maybe they thought, hey, they've backed off. My teleport has done its duty. I'll make sure that the cooldown isn't as punishing and cancel that on the spot. But yeah, we saw that just ended up costing Catch his flash. So after that little skirmish in the mid lane, DFM are up to a 2,000 gold lead. Three towers to one, a dragon apiece, two kills all. Both these teams, you mentioned how much momentum that Isaris were running on. But now the ball's in the court of DFM. Let's see if they can either make something happen or history repeat itself and the play will be a little bit too yeah, over I think the idea is don't just sit mid lane and let Isaris Gaming chill out yep. and hit a team fight that they're looking for the later the game goes because naturally that's not the right idea. And you do run the risk of actually going down an entire game from one mistake. DFM, they've got the uh, slight edge. Yep. They've also got the rise with two massive items. And they need to actually start trying to pull the trigger a little bit more effectively. As this dragon is actually the big point of contention. Yeah, Pride started that when we see all five members of DFM in the river. The verdict of the keeper was used. Just blows catch away. That's the jungler. They might be able to burst this, burst this one down before he gets back. They should be doing it. The smite is there. Graves secures that one. The damage is coming out. Catch in the back lane. Trying to go onto Graves. The lamb's respite has been used. Corky was killed straight away by Catch. He gets out of that one alive. Kletos, is that boomerang going to be enough? No. Pride's in a hell of a lot of trouble. Forced to flash and a great engage by DFM.
the positives and negatives of a lamb's respite was just very much <laughs> evident right there. Of yep. course, we saw a lot of, lot of low health bars, but nobody actually dying because they were all safe. Kletos, of course, doing as much damage as he can, saving his flash until as late as possible. Sure. Almost backfired, but it didn't. As once again, we reset with nothing really to speak of besides Zykro dying. Looks like EMP has picked himself up that Rabadon's death cap, and I don't, haven't seen mid laners bite in quite some time, but Karma, she just wants that pure AP, as we mentioned. Yeah. The AP scalings on her moves did receive quite a buff. I guess the cool thing about Karma as well is auto attacks reduce the cooldown of the ultimate true, to the true. mantra, and you're not an ultimate reliant champion. It's only aided further by said auto attack. So Q being a very low cooldown, you want to do as much damage as you can with it. Perhaps cooldown reduction is a better idea, but with Lucidity... It makes up for it to an extent. The Deathfire. Sorry, Deathfire. Yeah. Deathcap. Actually, a very <laughs> good suggestion. Yeah, fair call. Looks like Catch has finished his Sated Devourer. Got himself the more of the more Mortis and got himself a Zeal. Whilst also picking up those boots of Swifter. So he's going to be zipping around like a lamb from a wolf. Rise. He's finished himself that Seraph's Embrace. The tier has been fully stacked. Ten stacks on the Rod of Ages. So basically, the time bomb has exploded, and now it's just straight items after this. I think it's about which wire to cut, honestly, as Sid is actually quite low. Well, Psycho might be in a little bit of trouble. On the hunt has been proc. Newbie might be the one getting caught out here. He is super low. There is the Gragas flashing in. EMP goes yeah, into the fight. Two. There's going to be two kills going over to DFM. They pull the trigger, and what a shot they just fired. Oh, they got him. Oh, no. This rune prison's going to be enough. Kletos, maybe, going to have to dash out of that one. Yeah, no safety for three members Baron. of Isarus, and absolutely right, they've got the Baron as a possibility. It's a Seda Devourer, it's a Rise as well. Like, watch how quickly this actually goes down between all of these members of Detonation. Focus me. There is a Teleport, however. I think they want to contest. Yeah, Kletos and Prize, they don't want to let this one go down without a fight. Keeper of the Verdict goes down, blows out Gragas, but that's not the jungler. Rise picks up the Baron for his team. They might want to back out from this one. They want to keep all five buffs alive. Yeah. What an advantage, DFM. This game has just exploded, Rusty. Absolutely. 5,000 gold in the lead. Six kills to two. After what seemed like an eternity, we are now seeing the fighting erupt. Yeah, big item buys now to come out as well from Detonation Focus Me. With a lead like this, at this time in the game, you would imagine they'll start looking a little bit more aggressively to siege down some objectives, get those turrets going, and utilize that Baron power play much more effectively. Ysiris Gaming, they just seem respondent to everything, but they're not responding well enough. And in fact, they're getting caught out of position a lot. This is the double teleport all over again. Yeah, we gave them praise earlier on about how well they can do from playing from behind. They're going to have to prove us right and do exactly that because the ball is well and truly in DFM's court. All they have to do is go for the three-pointer. Yeah, sports ball reference. I don't, I don't no. know if the three point is the the right description. I was with you. I was, I was very with you up until the three point. Yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, does, does it show that I don't know basketball? <laughs> <laughs> the three point is a harder shot. <laughs> yeah, they want to go for the hard shot, man. Easy, more Why points. Why would you do that when there's easy shots? I don't know. You do the fifteen foot jumper. All right, Rusty, you caught me. Yeah, I don't know the sports ball. Nailed it. <laughs> Oh. Hey, you took on that challenge. That's all I'm saying. I didn't, I didn't force <laughs> anything out of your mouth. He called me out. I'll, I'll, I'll respect that one. Catch, though. Might have been caught out himself here. Is going to able to jump over that wall. Oof. Wolf giving him that extra bit of cooldown to maintain that one. Yeah, they actually popped the more of Malmordius, I believe, from him also. Needs to show a little bit of respect here, Catch. But naturally, once he finds something that he can hit, he'll get all of his health back. And I guess they're just not actually able to push in yet. Detonation, focus me. Being very cautious to the poke that is available from Isaris. And there is a lot of it between a Corky and a Karma. Sure. Every time a Mantra Q connects, you lose probably a third of your health immediately. Catch has got himself that Phantom Dancer, so a nice chunk of damage reduction coming out of that one. Pride, he can't even stand near that. Look how much damage is coming out. Catch is with a few autos, a few hop skips and jumps. They've got themselves a bot tower here. Yeah, Catch is freakishly far ahead right yeah. now. Like That's just the way that... Kindred naturally starts to work either behind or ahead. This one is doing stupid amounts of damage to even the top laner of ISG in Pride. Yeah, two, two armor items and he just shred through it like butter. Yeah, absolutely right. And once again, this is the kind spawn 
of the marks of the Kindred as well. <laughs> Be able to go from top lane to bottom lane, get the dragon whilst getting marks at the same time. So the early sated, the many marks that come out, and that's a happy Kindred. 30 seconds, 30 seconds left on this dragon, and so we've seen the teams have been trading it backwards and forwards, but there's no reason for DFM to give this one up as they are in a commanding lead right now. It's going to be on to Karma to land a few of those clutch cues, keep their team right. from getting oh. caught up. Even a last whisper for Kindred. Oh, wow. That's like taking aggression to the next level, and that's wanting to take out all of the tanks. It's not too bad of a decision. Sure. But you are squishy. Well, that's why Lamb's Respite is there, to keep herself alive. Friday might want to go into this one. W being proc, the Karma ulti, uh, the Karma shield as well, but... DFM, they're no stranger to running fast themselves, that on the hunt. Yeah, they're about as fast as the Sivir ultimate here with yeah. the Karma team compositions. Everybody at the exact same pace, which is faster than average, just walks away. <laughs> But they, again, that dragon is a thing. They walk away at a very brisk pace. Catch isn't there. He was off trying There's to the get teleport. his own camp. The teleport comes in through the back. Pride might be in a little bit of trouble, but it looks like the dragon That's is going to be the primary flank. focus. Yeah, you're not wrong. The Karma has engaged, has been used. Pride, he's looking for a target to go on. Can't find one. Catch maybe wanted to go for this one. A beautiful ulti. Going to be knocking them away, but oh, the smite out of Catch. Despite all of that, he still gets the dragon. Yeah, and Kindred's just going to try and zone them away from this middle lane. If anyone rotates, they'll be making a mistake and potentially die for this. So keep your eyes peeled on that Kindred on the minimap. As Detonation focused me, they secure the dragon through said Kindred, and now they get a mid lane turret to boot. Look at him, he's cheeky. Impressive plays, impressive plays. Absolutely, it was very impressively done. Most importantly, from Catch to secure that dragon again. Yeah, despite that he was on the other side of the map when it was started, trying to go after one of his marks of the Kindred, came back in halfway through the dragon, Poppy knocks away two members of the team and then proceeds to fall back, allowing Kindred to get in, smite, and get out. Looks like they're trying to answer with a mid-tower of their own, but not doing as much damage as they hoped. Yeah. I mean, in terms of execution, you can see, Isaris, they're doing it as a five-man roster, and this is the right idea. They've got the numbers advantage, so yeah, they do get the turret. Now they get it in the end. Gragas was still top, no teleport available through ISG. They're, they're not out of the game yet. They're very well and truly behind. But we said that in game number one of the day. This is almost, a, it's getting closer to the unachievable gold margin. But sure. we have seen teams come back from higher than this, that is for certain. And once again, given the team composition that they've got, they're very capable of bursting somebody out. Graves is always going to scale. Corky with that third item, which will be coming up now. There you go. Another rapid fire cannon tonight. Yeah, he's going to be doing a lot of damage. Of course, rapid fire are part of the trinity of Corky items, you would imagine. Yep. Rapid fire onto Graves also. Yeah, oh, that one. That one's a bit different. Yeah, not something of, I'm used to seeing, especially on the jungle Graves. Instead of the Phantom Dancer is the major contrast there, but Rapid Fire was the original item that you would get on Graves. Yep. Extra range on your auto attacks against teams that maybe want to fight you in close quarters that you're not comfortable with. Helps is, with catching people as well. Does the extra range work on all five of the no. uh, bucks? Just one, I think, isn't it? I think it's the middle one. Yeah, I think it's just the middle one, so you're not going to be getting the full brunt of damage, but... Yeah, no, pop uh, quiz, but if you crit and you get double the bullets, <laughs> how many... Yeah. yeah. True that, Rusty. Not to mention a Graves with a red buff is enough to just catch you out and keep you there. Yeah, no, it's just actually very handy, the utility behind it as well. Builds out of a very nice item path as well. You don't True. need a static shiv. May as well get the other utility path. Catch just backflips out of that one. Doesn't want none of a chair to the face that Newbie has to offer. Gragas just milling around there. So after what seemed like explosive combat, DFM have gone back into farming. They know how they want to win this game, and it's not through acing the team in the middle of the game. It's through attrition, it's through sieging, it's through getting the Baron and making their presence on the map known. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race here for Detonation Focus. I mean, perhaps they're waiting on a Void Staff out of Seros. There is a chunk of magic resistance on the top laner and jungler, there it and is. even with the Aegis, so... Yeah, I would imagine with this item build, they'll go back towards the Baron, they'll look to contest this area, and just get a successful team fight straight off the bat, as long as they don't stop yeah, stop taking hits to the Baron. 
Poppy's got a teleport available, so she is going to be able to get in the fight regardless of her position on the map. Looks like Catch wants to do as much damage as he can. It looks like they're found onto Kletos. He might be in a bit of trouble, going to have to burn the flash, but he's walking the wrong way. Here comes Poppy. I don't think she's in a good enough position, though. The only one in target oh, is moving Seros. the flash over the wall. Seros, he gets exhausted, but so much damage coming out down on to the Corky is going to be enough. Emp is the next one to fall. Newbie and Seros, they are just duking it out here. The heal comes through to give them extra movement speed. Pride on the wrong side of the map. Utapon not going to have enough. Siva does eventually kill the Corky. That's going to be 4 for 0 in favor of Don't Focus Me. Four people dead and only the Braum alive. They don't necessarily need to get the Baron buff because the minions are going to crash now as Gragas guides them towards the top lane inhibitor turret. Even tanking it. This is a very extended period of time where I'm not sure that they're going to be able to hold on. This could potentially be the whole game. Yeah, five seconds on Graves. The rest sporting about a 15-second death timer. It looks like Detonation Focus Me want to detonate and focus this base as they go for the first inhibitor turret. Oh, Eternal just That's bucking one. Graves away. The second one is going to go down. The Lamb's Respite has been used. The Nexus is undefended. Only two members left alive. That's this it. should be it. Detonation Focus Me take a convincing win against ISG. Well played to them. And one step in the right direction for Detonation Focus me and the entire Japanese region once again as their pride will be restored a little bit after this game. But a very, very impressive performance, honestly, from this team. They found a lead, they used that lead, and they effectively consolidated that lead to just win the game. They didn't need the Baron. That's the most important thing. Yeah, once they got even the slightest bit of advantage, it was nothing but good times from then on out. They were able to get the Baron, the Towers, the Dragon, all their items at the exact right times, and we saw just how much damage they do when they can choose to fight. Yeah, and again, this comes back to even the Kindred as well yeah, as the jungle pick, because to me, yeah, they were doing great. Like, they've got a Ryze that does a lot of damage. The Gragas did a lot of work in that game as well in making picks and consolidating the team fights that they were engaging. But that Kindred just did so much damage. They were pushing out Poppy. Like, the front line did not exist from Isaris at you, all. You can definitely see why Detonation Focus Me have been the top team in their region, doing such a good job of showing that off in the game. But we're going to have a quick look at the entire wrap-up of today, looking at all the teams that have played. Once again, Lion Gaming getting taken out by the team that just played Isaris Gaming. Hard Random taking off the <laughs> taking the crown off the favourites in Ince Esports. Supermassive taking out our own Chiefs Esports Club. Detonation Focus Me... While they look strong in that game, not so strong being taken out by the Saigon Jokers. Hard Random at it again with the win over Chiefs. Ints, who looked unstoppable against Lying, get themselves another win. Detonation Focus Me showed that they're no team to be messed around with. Just absolutely dominated in that last yeah, game. Yeah, some curious performances, I think, across the board here from all of these teams today. Of course, we've seen them all play. And there's only one team, two teams, I believe, total that have actually gone 0-2 and two so far. And that is Land and Ost. So... Unfortunate stuff for them. <laughs> Bless the Oceanic team. But again, I actually think that there's a lot of strong performances from everybody across the board. And I've always likened the wildcard teams in terms of performance to the LCS compadres to like kind of compare how they sure. actually go. I'd like to think that everyone who performed today is a low tier LCS to mid tier LCS. So definitely signs of holistic improvement throughout all of the wildcard regions. Yeah, definitely a mixed bag of talent here. So really looking forward to that. We're going to take a quick look at the overall standings at the moment. You can see hard random up 2-0. Dominating the top of the leaderboard. Supermassive Esports 1-0. Saigon Jokers 1-0. Both of them only playing one game today. Isaris going to be on that 1-1. One and one. Ince Esports and Detonation Focus Me also rocking that 1-1. One one. Then in the bottom of the table is going to be Lion Gaming and Chiefs Esports. Unfortunately, getting 0-2 in the first day of the competition. Yeah, an unfortunate start for two of the regions, but a very impressive start from Hard Random. Going 2-0. Yeah. And I mean, coming into this, their first game against Brazil. You'd say, look, Brazil are the favorites coming into this whole tournament. They always are. They've got the most infrastructure. We saw the video piece earlier about their history. They've got coaches. They've got psychologists. Like, everything's going for that region. Hard Random just walk in and destroy them. Yeah, they, that was clinical. They are looking very, very strong, and I'm excited to see what they can deliver in day number two. Speaking of day number two, we're going to have a little bit of a look at tomorrow's games. you got Chiefs taking on in, so that's going to be a game to watch. Saigon Joker's going to be rounding it out against Supermassive Esports. Hard Random taking on Lion Gaming in Esports up against Isaris. Lion Gaming once again on Detonation Focus Me. So by then, one of those teams are going to have a win, despite what happens. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, not Detonation Focus Me. 
Maybe, is there, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Isaris Gaming going to be taking on Saigon Jokers, Jokers later in the evening. Then the final game of tomorrow, Detonation Focus Meet taking on Supermassive Esports. Yeah, and there's a couple of really exciting games you have to look at. At the f start of the day in particular, yep. Chiefs taking on the Brazilian side. And secondly, we've also got Turkey playing again. To me, that is the one thing that I want to see because that one game that they played today, they looked phenomenal. And I actually want to see if... What is always referred to as the Dark Horse region can actually come out and put on a display. Yeah, I'm sure it was just a taste of what they have to offer. All these teams have shown incredible strengths, very few weaknesses, but if you can exploit them, you know where to look and know how to beat your opponents. Yeah, a lot of these teams and a lot of these regions have defined styles. They've got defined history, so they always play in default ways. There's always small things that you can do and ways that teams prepare to actually exploit those things. Alrighty, guys, we've had a very long day today. I've got to give massive props to Rusty, Pastry, and every and Soul Strikes, of course. My name is Max Rogi for Fogler. We had such a wonderful day bringing you these games. Hopefully, you tune in tomorrow. We'll see you then.